It's the first brake band that we've seen released ready to run in 009. Really, there's never been a better time to model this small diminutive railway. Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you back up here to the loft on Weir Yard. At least I would be if the intro and outro that we filmed hadn't got corrupted and we've only just realised. But we're going to press on. Now today's video, we're going to have a change of gauge. Not really a change of scale, we're going 009 narrow gauge. And I'm really grateful to Pico for sending over one of their bogey brake bands to the Linton and Barnstable Railway that was announced and brought out last year, 2021. But this was a model that I was really, really looking forward to. And uh, now that one's arrived, I can see that it's had a few upgrades over some of the previous wagon releases from Pico. Now, one of the most interesting things about this wagon is this is an all made in the UK wagon. So I'm really interested to see just what is possible at the price point that they've been able to bring this in. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, and with additional support from PD Models, makers of amazing 3D printed kits and detailing accessories that really bring your modelling projects to life. And let's take a really good look at this all new model from Pico. <laughs> spoilt in recent years with a plethora of 009 gauge rolling stock and for those of you who are in Europe uh, you might be more familiar with the similar HOE scale or in the US it would be I believe referred to as HON2 uh, but in the UK for a very long time in fact I can remember Hatton's adverts that used to have a very very short list of uh, things like track and a couple of kits and then it would say in capital letters this is all the 009 we have and then all of a sudden we started getting spoilt first with locomotives and then with these ready to run items of rolling stock that came through primarily from Pico although some of the other manufacturers have started to get in on the act as well. This Linton and Barnstable brake van is certainly something quite interesting and it follows on from the coaches that uh, Pico did for the Linton and Barnstable. They've also done some of the ventilated box vans, open wagons, uh, bogey wagons as well. There's a whole range of Linton and Barnstable rolling stock and this goods brake van is now pretty much the final thing that you need to round off the train. They've released these in Southern Railway livery and also two different Linton and Barnstable Railway liveries in the sort of red oxide livery that you see on this one, but then also in the Linton and Barnstable grey livery as well. And there are some detail differences between the Southern Railway version and the Linton and Barnstable Railway version, which I will get to as we go through this review. Now it comes in the pretty standard Pico rolling stock box and this is very unlike what any of the other manufacturers do. Uh, instead of having a cardboard outer with a clamshell thin plastic packaging on the inside, they've just gone for this very, very, very solid uh, plastic outer box which does actually protect the item quite well. It's very useful if you transport items or store items in their boxes because these are very resilient. Um, and for me, it makes no difference. I tend to keep all the boxes anyway, regardless of uh, what material they're made of. But for anybody for whom the box is just a wrapping that gets discarded when it arrives, I must say there's a little bit of worry about the amount of plastic in some of these packages. But the lid lifts off and the actual wagon itself, I'm just going to just tease this free. It's actually on a, a plinth, so I'm just going to take that out. And uh, I'm actually going to show you the catalogue number if I can find it. Yes, there we are. So this is GR-240BO, the 
The Linton and Barnstable eight ton bogey goods brake van open veranda and they also do a closed veranda version as well. LMB red livery is number 14. Now all three of the different versions that have been released in this initial tranche of models do have different identities so theoretically I guess you could have all three on your layout if you were modeling that transition period when some items may have been repainted into southern railway colors but other items had not. Now it isn't actually fixed to the base I'm just going to slide this plastic ring up and then it just lifts straight off. Now the basic wagon itself is uh, well at first glance you could be forgiven for thinking that this was uh, kind of a standard box van but you can see on the end there we've got the guards veranda and there's a cabin further in a uh, stove or at least we've got the representation of the stove pipe uh, chimney on the roof there but then further back this is uh, very much a, an area that could be used for carrying goods parcels that kind of thing and the Linton and Barnstable Railway uh, was one that, even though it was narrow gauge, was built much more towards mainline standards. Um, so it did have quite a generous loading gauge, and you can see there that these are quite tall on that narrow wheelbase. One of the things that actually I found out recently, quite interested in, is that all of the Pico wagons are made in the UK. And when you consider that these are coming out at an RRP, on a par with the 009 rolling stock that's appearing from another major manufacturer that is making their items in China, then actually this is something that I did want to draw attention to. And I do see this all the time posted online, people lamenting production moving out to China and uh, the prices increasing. They say, oh, why don't they move the production back to the UK? And the truth is that it's very expensive. But Pico have actually found a way of manufacturing these whereby they're a lot simpler to assemble and that means that you cut down on the labour which is one of the most expensive parts of the assembly of any railway models. And they've also been able to remove that really expensive now transportation cost. So again, that's another area which really does play into their favour. Now, to be able to do that, there are some simplifications to the design of these models. And as we go through the review, I will point out some of them. But overall, first impressions on these are reasonably good. It has the same presence as the prototype goods brake van. And the standard of the printing is really, really sharp and certainly well, well in advance of anything that we used to see when all models from all manufacturers were still made in the UK. This is the same kind of high quality printing that you get with models made overseas. And you can even see on that works plate there, the detail is incredible. Now, Pico aren't the only manufacturer that have started making wagons in the UK again, but certainly they have got a very good system. Now, one of the first things that I will point out, you can see on the ends here, the way that the model fits together. There are a few little panel gaps creeping in just on either side of that veranda. And um, if I just push, actually it does feel like it's seated, but certainly um, they don't fit together quite as flush as perhaps um, might be desired. And certainly when we look on the other end as well, we can also see the way that the model is assembled. Um, everything else though is pretty good. Now, one of the really great features about this that I do want to show you though, and this has been incorporated at a, still a very favorable RRP for these when you compare them with what else is on the market. These side doors do slide open. The side doors are poseable and they're not thick and chunky like we used to see on uh, the really old mainline uh, XLMS wagons where they really were so fattened and chunky to the point where they ruined the model. These actually look pretty much scale and that is quite a robust mechanism there for posing the door. 
um, and I really quite like it. And in my mind, I can imagine one of these in a siding at a station and maybe even a cameo with things like milk churns, perhaps, and a, a guy in there moving them around. And um, the interior of this wagon, if I just open the other side, both sides do open. You can just about see that there is an element of planking in the floor of the wagon. So it does mean that um, you can actually show off some of this interior quite well. Um, just looking into there, if we look right down, there is no partition for the guards area, but actually not a problem. And this is another area that Pico have worked to make these cost effective to produce in the UK and to, to keep the costs down to a very favourable level as a result in that they don't have detail that is there for the sake of having the detail. Uh, and if, if something doesn't add to the model for anything, anything other than the price, then they haven't put it on. And I don't think the model really suffers for that. The underframe is another area where you can see it's very much simplified. We've got uh, a couple of um, vacuum cylinders um, and not really anything else, but you're never going to see that. And this is an area where I've said this time and time again in reviews, if you can't normally see it, then why add detail that adds to the cost? We've got some basic side stretcher bars in there and from all viewing angles actually they do look just fine and um, they appear to be part of the moulding for the entire side pieces um, but they work out really well and the uh, finish there on the uh, printing picks them out perfectly. The printing is right where it needs to be um, to the point where you could be forgiven for thinking that some of these are separately applied but actually including that handrail there is reasonably well done. It's molded on detail. All of this is molded on detail, but it doesn't suffer for it. Again, the end of the van, we've got these steps. These are all molded on. It's all one piece on this uh, end insert and they do look pretty good. The handrail that goes up there and up to the roof again it's molded on but it looks good enough that it could conceivably be a separately applied piece it's not one thing i would say though is that that end piece just just a little bit proud just there but again from most viewing angles you wouldn't really notice and bear in mind that what you're seeing on your screen is several times bigger than the actual model is we get these vacuum hoses uh, fitted as standard. I think they're separate pieces, but they are actually really well glued on. They're not going to come off. The roof, I'm just going to pop that free. So we've got a, a one piece roof that you can see there uh, with the uh, stove pipe in the top. And that actually pops off really easily, which does make putting that cameo into the wagon a whole lot easier and you can see the indentations for the vacuum cylinders there and um, they're not again they're not separately added they're part of that molding but it does work quite well and then we've got the the glazing in there for the veranda end which there is a slight prismatic effect around the edges but again this is quite small you can probably tell by the size of my fingers that you know my thumb is about the the size of my thumb the end of this wagon and it does work really, really well. Now we're just going to reassemble all of this. And uh, one of the other things, actually, I will just point out, the underframe detail is also part of the side details. You can see if you added uh, interior lighting in this, you're not going to get any bleed through because there are actually two separate layers of plastic. And again, for those people who want to really go to town with this model and produce something very unique and um, that again is something that is worth a lot. The end of the veranda um, it's a little bit trickier you could get a guard in there we've got the handbrake wheel there is a parting seam straight across the center of it um, not 100% convinced on that but certainly again this is very small so from most viewing angles, um, it's really not a problem. Looking to the underside, we've got the fairly standard Pico bogies. 
Again, the detail on these is adequate for the job. They're pretty free running and one of the new areas where Pico have sought to improve on this model over previous ones is that we've actually got metal wheels or at least um, it would appear that metal tread on there um, pushed over plastic middles and these are actually on quite firmly and that should mean that they run a lot smoother and are less likely to pick up dirt. Although saying that I've actually found that with previous Pico wagon releases I've not had any problems whatsoever. So if we can look here on one of the Pico double bolster wagons, they're exactly the same bogies. Uh, the only difference is that we've got uh, metal treaded wheels rather than the pure plastic. Um, but um, it's really nice to see that we can very, very quickly start to make up an authentic Linton and Barnstable train. Uh, we do have suitable locomotives come through from another manufacturer so really there's never been a better time to model this small diminutive railway. So I turn now to the scores and uh, first up is build quality and actually it's, it's a fairly simple model but it hasn't compromised too much of the detail in doing that. There are a few areas where there are some panel gaps between the different pieces that are assembled together and really the areas that you can see this most are just on the end here where you can just see that uh, slight gap down that side and on this side it just sits ever so slightly proud. On the other end, the veranda end, again we just get this ever so slight gap between the edges of the veranda and the sides of the wagon but other than that, actually, this is a pretty good solid model and even the sliding doors have uh, been quite robust in the usage that I've given this and show no signs of being fragile or coming apart. So actually really quite pleased with that. The roof fits on snugly but can still be removed if you wish to add some kind of detailed interior and that really does make this prime candidate for adding in some additional effects such as lighting, maybe even a flickering stove. There's a lot that you could do with this, but otherwise fairly simple but effective. So I'm going to give this a 7.2. Next up is running quality and actually those metal tired wheels do run very, very well. I always found that the plastic wheels on the previous releases of the Pico rolling stock actually were pretty smooth running and in all honesty despite historically Hornby 00 plastic wheels being the bane of my childhood for picking up dirt I haven't actually found them too much of a problem in 009 but these metal wheels certainly go some way to soothe some of the criticisms that I've seen leveled against the Pico 009 wagons and I'm sure that we will see that rolled out across the range as new releases come forward. So overall good solid and I'm going to give this an 8.8 .8 out of 10. When it comes to innovation I really like the fact that this is a model that is being made and packed in its entirety in the UK and what Pico have shown is that they can bring out a wagon at a price that is in keeping with what other manufacturers are doing and actually delivering it pretty reasonably by very very clever use of the assembly process to minimize the labor that goes into assembling these. Yes there are some compromises that are made but I've said time and time again that detail that adds very little other than cost really doesn't deserve to be on models if all it's going to do is raise the prices ever higher. And when you look at the underframe of this model, all the areas that you don't normally see have been left pretty spartan and the wagon does not suffer for that. Another huge area for me that is really, really impressive are these sliding doors. And I really like what they've done with this to add that little bit of something extra. They could quite easily have tooled up this van with doors fixed in the closed position and I don't think anybody would have expected anything other than that and it just shows that they've gone above and beyond. They've also tooled up two different variants with the closed and the open verandas so it does mean that they've got some degree of flexibility 
to model all the different versions of these fans in the various stages of their life, and I really do like that. One of the prime advantages of manufacturing in the UK is the fact that theoretically things can be made quite quickly and reach the shops without delays, although at the moment with social distancing, Pico have found it very difficult to be able to run at full production, but I'm sure that once things get back to normal, we're going to be spoilt rotten with a steady flow of these incredibly desirable wagons. So I'm going to give this an 8.8 .8 out of 10. On accuracy and quality of finish, there weren't really any major areas that I found a problem. The printing is nice and sharp. The colours are where they should be. And actually it does a great job at making some of these moulded details seem as good as if they had been separately applied. For me it does though come back to some of these little panel gaps at either end and once you see them it is a little bit difficult to unsee them. It's not a major problem but it is there. The roof too would really benefit from a bit of weathering. The white used on this for me is just a little bit too shiny and I think it comes down to the plastic that's used and it does appear to be that these are in the bare plastic colour. They don't have a paint finish and for me that is one area where I think that these could be improved. That said it would be a very easy job to just run over a quick coat of a more matte coloured white paint and it would really bring these out into their own. So all in all I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. On value for money again these aren't coming in as being overly expensive. I can find them online for just over the £30 mark and that seems pretty reasonable when you compare them to what else is on the market that is comparable in 009. So overall a good solid release from Pico and I'm going to give that a 9.0 out of 10. And that gives us a final score of 42.3 which is pretty respectable and this is definitely a wagon which is going to take pride of place on my 009 layout Mineth Tatis and I'd like to thank again Pico for sending this over for review. It's also the first brake van that we've seen released ready to run in 009 and certainly that's something that with the plethora of other rolling stock that has been released from a number of different manufacturers it makes all the difference and these do actually look not identical but similar to some of the passenger brake vans that ran on the Festiniog railway. So with a little bit of careful repainting it's more than possible to make this look pretty good on a Festiniog themed railway as well and that really does make this quite a useful wagon. So overall this gets the thumbs up from me. Well I hope you found that video really informative and I'd love to hear from you down in the comments section down below and see what you think about this model. Is this something that you think I've missed? Because it's always great to get another person's point of view and certainly if this is a model that you've bought and you really do love, I'd love to hear from you as well. Also, there are any other identities of this wagon that you really, really think that Pico need to bring out in terms of liveries and in terms of detail differences. Again, would love to hear from you down in the comments. And don't forget to tickle that like button. And sharing is caring. Share this video on social media too, and I'll be eternally grateful to you. And if you haven't already done so, do please consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. Also take a look at our merch store. We've got a whole wealth of t-shirt, hoodie, mug, sticker designs in there and we've got the all new Billy's Replacement Speakers which is sure to be a firm favourite so get your copy now. But until next time this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling, bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Today's video also comes with the support of PD Models, makers of a whole range of 3D printed kits and accessory detailing that brings something special to your model layout. 
available in a number of different scales and gauges, this range is sure to have something for you. So check them out at the affiliate link down below to see what they have got today to make your model layout something special. PD models are also well known for their museum quality models that can be made bespoke to order. So do contact them if you have some specific requirements and see if they can do something special for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.